Why? For courage. For courage. This is my teddy bear that I sleep with at night. This is what, what do you call a teddy bear you sleep with it? A crutch? What? Security. It's my security blanket. Right here. Honestly, really. Did you ever have a child that had to sleep with a teddy bear? Or well, what are some things your child slept with, had to have it for you to sleep? Raise your hand, I'll call on you. Huh? What is it? What? Winnie the Pooh? <clears throat> Anybody needs a Winnie the Pooh, that's just important. Who else? Uh huh. A blanket? What else? What else? Raggedy Andy. A silky pillow. Well, this is my Raggedy Andy right here. This is my Winnie the Pooh. You know why? Because I've got to have it. The other night I was, <laughs> I was about to preach. Brother Roloff was introducing me, and he wanted, he wanted a Bible, and he didn't have his. He said, Brother Jack, let me have your Bible. He came over and got my Bible, brought it up here. And there I sat over there about to preach and didn't have a Bible. And I thought, good night. I got scared, really honestly. I had to have my Winnie the Pooh, my Raggedy Ann. I got scared. He said, now Brother Jack's going to go. And listen, from, from right over there where I was sitting to right here, it seemed like a mile and a half. Why? I didn't have it. I mean, the Bible. I can stand up somewhere. But what do with my hands? Why? Because I'm always carrying the Bible. I can't do it like this. Can't do it. I've got to do it like this. Why? I got my security blanket. And by the way, that's what this is. That's what this is. It's it, it's for battle. His hand is, his hand plays the sword for battle. His hand plays to the sword for comfort. His hand plays to the sword for courage. I am. Um, my phone's been ringing pretty heavy lately. Brother Ed Nelson said to me, I conducted an hour's telecast with the roll-off of the, of the night, Thursday, Friday night, 7, 8, on prime time, one of the stations there, <clears throat> one hour. And Brother Ed Nelson said, Dr. Howes, you're going to have to be going a lot. I don't know what, what he meant by that, but I've made a vow to God that anywhere a preacher is in trouble, if he needs me and wants me, I'll go to him. I'll go to him. We face some real battles. In fact, we face so many battles. We better just let our hand cleave to the sword. Just cleave to the sword. And I was thinking... On the airplane yesterday morning, I got the Bible out and I was reading it. <laughs> it wasn't while I get little. I hardly ever get cute in public, but it was while I get. I want. I want. I want to be cute. I, I know I failed, but I. I, I want. I, you know, like the waitress came. Stewardess came by and said, "You want breakfast?" And I said, "I'm having it." She said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "This is milk, and it's meat, and it's bread. By the way, it's beef. It's not pork." And uh, I said, it's milk. And it's bread. She said, what do you mean? And I said, little lady, I said, all these years I've been feasting from the milk of this book. And I've been feasting from the bread of this book and the meat of this book. And I said, if you don't mind, I don't think I want to eat this morning. I'm already eating. I'm already eating. And I got to thinking. Twenty-eight years, twenty-eight and a half years, I've been preaching this book. I've been believing this book. I've been holding up this book. I've been learning this book, memorizing this book, and using this book. I just think I'll go ahead and finish it out the same way. Finish it out the same way. And if the day comes, with those doors, and by the way, it's closer than you think. If the day comes, those doors swing open back there. And in walks uniformed people. They walk up here to the pulpit, and they say, "You're going to have to. You got to. to you got to. We got some rules. You're going to have to obey from Indianapolis or Washington to keep this church going." By the way, just go ahead and either if that's what you want to do, just call another pastor and go right ahead. But I'm not going to do it. 
I mean, as far as the running of the church is concerned, the, the government's not going to tell us what we're going to do in this church unless we break a, a law of the land. I mean, we're not going to, we're not going to have in this, they're not going to check what we preach and what we do and how we teach. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They just won't do it. And they're ever so okay. Or if it gets worse than that, and it could get worse than that. It could, and we're closer to Soviet Russia communism than any of us dare to realize. If they walk in here and they say, Mister, you can't preach Jesus anymore. And you can't preach the Bible. Do you know it's a, it's a crime in Russia to print a Bible? You know, you get three years in the penitentiary of having a Sunday school in Russia. They say, how about the First Baptist Church in Moscow? That's just window dressing, trying to deceive people like you. You go to Russia and try to start a church. Take your Bible and try to start a church. See what happens. They walk in those doors back there. And, they, and I'm convinced that in my lifetime they will. <clears throat> you heard Dr. Van Impey. Dr. Van Impey, uh, Dr. Van Impey said that, that, that Dr. Al Janney, one of the most brilliant preachers in America, has seen the list of men that the Russians will kill first if they take over this nation. And he said they had a list of ten in my names in the top ten. When they do, they walk in the door and say, okay. I mean, I got it all planned. I'm just going to cleave to the Word. Just going to cleave to the Word. And brother, if I leave this whole world holding on to the Word, what better way could you enter heaven than hanging on to the Word of God? The first thing you say to Jesus, Jesus says, what you got in your hand? I got your book. I preached it for all those years. I told people about it. Lord, I always believed it. I didn't always understand it, but I always believed it. I didn't always do it justice, but I always loved it. I didn't always understand what you said in it, but I always read it. And Lord, I stood for the word. That's all that matters. Oh, may this preacher hand cleave to the word. And may this church's hand cleave to the word. That's the only answer. And by the way, this morning, if you're here, you're not saved. Uh, the answer is to cleave to the Word of God. He said, Well, Hiles, I tell you what, I know I'm saved because I was there when it happened and I ought to know. I know I'm saved because my hand is cleaving to the promises of this book. Well, I know I'm saved because I tingle. I tingle one time when I ate too many onions at night. No, you're not saved because you tingle. You're saved because you trust the Word and your hand cleaves to the Word. I know I'm saved because, because uh, I, felt, I felt shock treatment going out of my ears. I felt the same thing when I stuck my finger in a wall socket one time. No, you're saved because you believe the Word. Amen. Believe the Word. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweet refrain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The Word. David said, Gather around me. People won't talk to you. I won't tell you about some men. going to mean a lot to me. I won't tell you about Eliezer. He took a sword one day and he slew Philistine after Philistine. His hand got weary. His hand claved to the sword. There's one who's going to sit on the throne of David one of these days. The second David, more mighty than the first David. The root and offspring of David. The one who's going to sit on David's throne. And I hope when he's there, he can say, I won't tell you about one of my mighty men. I won't tell you about old Jack Hiles. He fought and he fought and he fought and he fought. And after the battle was over, his hand clave to the Word of God. What does this book mean to you this morning? Huh? What does it mean to you? You ashamed to carry it? Huh? You own a business? You fellas, 40 or 50 of you here own businesses. And folks walk in. Do they see the sword? Huh? They see the sword? You know, people who go to public schools, when you walk down the hall, <coughs> high school for that matter, do folks see the sword? Huh? Huh? What does it mean to you? How did you what? If you do not love and read the Word now, what are you going to do when you stick a gun in your head? Huh? Our Heavenly Father,